personnel at the U.S. Naval Auxiliary Air Station at 29 Palms, the Lucky Strike Program. Starring Jack Denny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Larry Stevens, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, from this spot on the desert that has 29 palms, we bring we bring you a man with a spot on his head that has 29 hairs, and here he is, Jack Benny. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I don't mind you reaching a little for a laugh. <laughs> But you don't have to go that far. Hmm. <laughs> Only 29 hairs. I'm counting the two on your chest. Oh. <laughs> Although, you know, Don, I'm kind of proud of those two hairs. I've even named them. Named them? Yep. Abercrombie and Fitch. <laughs> Abercrombie is the one on the left, but Fitch has been with me a little longer. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Jack. Fitch is a hair tonic. I know, Don. In fact, if it wasn't for Fitch, I would have lost Abercrombie. <laughs> Don, this may sound silly, but they really helped me get around. Why, when I came up to the main gate this morning, the guard saluted and let me right through. The guard saluted you? Yep. As I reached the gate, my shirt blew open. He saw the two hairs on my chest and thought I was an ensign. <laughs> yes, you don't have to laugh, fellas. You know, I used to be in the Navy. And believe me, Don, if I were still in the Navy, I'd want to be stationed right here at 29 Pond. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't know. There's nothing like the desert that's so beautiful, so colorful, Honestly, so, so romantic, every bit of it. Jack, how can you stand there with your pants full of cactus <laughs> and say the desert is beautiful, colorful, and romantic? I'm merely repeating what it says on the bulletin board. <laughs> Bulletin board? Yes, it says, from Lieutenant Commander Smith to the personnel at 29 Palms, you will find this desert beautiful, colorful, and romantic. That's an order. <laughs> well, you see, Don, this place is... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, fellas. Here we are at 29 Palms. Certainly different from the other camps we visited, isn't it? It sure is, Jack, but that's because it's so isolated. Oh, I don't think so, Mary. This place isn't so far out in the desert. <laughs> it isn't, huh? Then how come when they give the boys a pass, they give them a canteen of water at the same time? A canteen of water? Yes, and if they sip it sparingly, they can make it to the main highway. Mary! Mary, stop, stop exaggerating. Exaggerating? Jack, this afternoon, I was uh, taking a walk in the desert. I happened to pass two sailors. Uh-huh. So one of them came over, looked at me, blinked his eyes, looked at me again, then turned to his friend and said, Hey, Steve, we must be winning. They've got these things back in production again. <laughs> Those boys were just kidding you. I'll bet at least half of these fellas have seen girls before. <laughs> anyway, they were just trying to get acquainted. After all, you're the only girl here. Well, if I am, I'm not very popular. When we arrived, I was wearing my prettiest dress, and yet all the fellas flocked around Don Wilson. That's right, Jack. They hung around me for hours. Well, <laughs> well why wouldn't they, Don? It's the first time they've seen so much shade in one lump. <laughs> Joe, let's be honest about it. The weather isn't bad out here at all, is Jack, it? Jack, nobody's going to punch you in the nose. It's hot and it's dry, so what, you might as well admit it. Now, Mary, it isn't hot. Oh, here comes Larry Stevens. I'll prove it to you. Say, Larry, do you think it's dry up here? Larry, it isn't so dry up here, is it? Larry, stop licking your lips and answer me. Hmm. Oh, I feel better now, Mr. Benny. Hello. Larry, how do you 
do you like it here? This is a nice spot, isn't it? Yes, but it, isn't it strange having a naval station so far from the ocean? Well, that's not unusual, Larry. When I was a sailor in the First World War, I was stationed at Great Lakes, and I went through my entire naval career without seeing either the Pacific or the Atlantic. Yeah, but at least you saw Lake Michigan. No, 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 no. I didn't see that either. What you must have seen at the Great Lakes Naval Station is right on the shores of Lake Michigan. Mary, when I joined the Navy, I spent my first night in a hammock. When I got up, I was so bent over, I didn't see anything but the guy in back of me for the next three years. I didn't mind being bent over, but every time I sat down, I rocked myself to sleep. <laughs> it was awful. You know? But, Jack, how could you get so doubled up from sleeping? Well, Don, it was my first experience with a hammock. How did I know you weren't supposed to hang both ends on the same hook? <laughs> you know, they should give... They should give directions with those things. Gee, Mr. Benny, it must have been terrible walking around bent over like that for three years. No, no, Larry, it worked out very well. After leaving the Navy, I went into Vaudeville as the only talking U-turn in the country. <laughs> anyway, kid, I knew that would hit Remley. Anyway, kid, now that you're here, I'm sure the boys would like to have a song. How about it? Okay. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny. Yes, what is it, sailor? Is it true that when you do your show at a camp, the boys always give you a souvenir? Why, yes, yes. Once I played at an infantry camp, and they gave me a rifle. Another time, I was at an air base, and they gave me a parachute. Just two weeks ago, I played at a boot camp. And they gave him the boot. Mary. <laughs> She's just jealous because my sun suit is more daring than hers. <laughs> anyway, sailor. Anyway, it's true. When I play at a camp, the boys usually get together and give me some sort of a souvenir to take home with me. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Benny, because the boys here voted to give you something, too. Well, in fact, there are so many things we'd like to give you, you can take your choice. My choice? Yeah. You can have the desert, the palms, the wind, the sand, the rabbits, the sagebrush, the cactus. Wait a minute. The fella. heat, look, the dust, the gophers, the coyotes, the snake, sailor. The wait ants, a the dunes, the bees, the breeze. Larry, you the better The crush, the marsh, the hunt. Larry, see. The yucca, the lizard, the bunny. Now, wait a minute. Stephen singing the stars, the tars, the bar. I mean, you belong to my heart. And now, fellas, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to. Okay, go... sailors, you're all in clover because Harris is here and I'm taking over. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. You can beat those little pickies together now. Applause me, kids. Applause me. Applause me. Phil, you always have to be so late. What, ta what took you so long getting here? Well, I'm sorry, Jackson, but I couldn't get a lift, so I walked over from the ship's service store. Oh. <laughs> well, now, uh, now that you're here, I wish that you... Just a second, Jackson. Hold it a minute. I want to get a little sand out of my shoe. Okay. <laughs> Gee. All that sand? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. I got a gopher in there, too. <laughs> a gopher? I'm afraid to take off the other shoe. I might find gravel girding. <laughs> Phil, stop. <laughs> Phil, stop making up the... Oh, Phil. Jackson, I'm only kidding. I'm just kidding you. I really love it here at 28 Palms. Bill, it's not 28 palms, it's 29 palms. It's 28. 29. 28. 29. 28. 29. That's 28. You keep out of this. Oh. 
if you take my word for it, Phil, it's 29 pounds. How do they get in from New York like that? Huh? And now, wait buddy. a minute, Jackson. Hold it just a minute. You know, I meant to tell you. Friday night, I saw the opening of your new picture, The Horn Blows at Midnight, at Warner Brothers Theater. Oh, yes. The Horn Blows at Midnight. How'd you like me? I don't know. I blew at 10.30. <laughs> Don't tell me you have the picture here already. <laughs> what? At 10.30. <laughs> no, no. And, Phil, you don't have to make any cracks at my picture because if I must say so myself, I give a dynamic performance. You do, eh? I certainly do. Did you read what the critics said about me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> And now, fellas, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going... And the critics at Jack Benny's performance... I know what they said. You don't have to repeat it. <laughs> and now, fellas, for our feature attraction tonight... Jack, I saw your picture, and I thought you were wonderful. Nobody's asking... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What did you say, Don? I said, I saw your picture, and I thought you were wonderful. But I was a little disappointed in the credits. Why? I got star billing. I know, Jack, but I mean the other credits. You know where it says, music by Waxman, makeup by Westmore, and gowns by Milo. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, they should have added cigarettes by Lucky Strike. Oh, for heaven's sake, down in the movies, they can't credit every incidental thing. But, Jack, Lucky Strikes aren't incidental. They're made from the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco. Well, Don, Don, I agree with you, but tell me, in which scenes did you think I did my best acting? Well, to tell you the truth, Jack, I didn't see your picture. What? When I noticed that they didn't give Lucky Strike credit, I got up and walked out. Well, Don, if you didn't see the picture, how did you know I was wonderful in it? You told me that two weeks ago. Oh! And now, hey, oh, Jackson, I want to ask you something. Uh, if you're so good in that picture, how come today it opened in Los Angeles you were hiding in Palm Springs? I wasn't hiding. You know very well I subleased William Powell's house. He's not using it for a month. What are you paying him for, Jack? Well, ordinarily, he rents it for $150 a month. But since we're such good friends, he insisted that I take it for nothing. But I told him it was ridiculous, and I gave him $10. <laughs> you know, I... I just... I just couldn't be a stinker. <laughs> now, let's see. Where was he? Ooh. Oh, yes. Mary. Oh, yeah. Tonight, fellas... We're going to present a dramatic play entitled... <laughs> Excuse me, I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> oh, hello, Rochester, what do you want? I thought I'd better call you, boss. Mr. William Powell was here and examined his house and the things he said about you. Why? Why, was he mad? Mad? You know how he usually speaks in that nice, quiet, subdued voice? Yes. Well, today he sounds like Donald Duck with his tail on fire. <laughs> well, Rochester, how did he happen to get so angry? Well, it worked up slowly. When he learned you were renting out rooms, he got red in the face. <laughs> then when he found out you'd start a cocktail lounge in the den, his face got purple. <laughs> purple? Yeah, and by the time he saw the slot machines, you couldn't tell him from me. <laughs> Gee, he really must have been sore, huh? I'll say he was. Even his lawyer couldn't calm him down. His lawyer? Did his lawyer come out with him? No, the lawyer came out with the chief of police. <laughs> you, mean, you mean the chief of police was there? Yeah, he arrived shortly after the sheriff. <laughs> sheriff, chief of police. I wonder what he figures on doing. I don't know, but you couldn't be worse right now if you were Hitler in San Francisco. <laughs> Rochester. Don't worry about it. I'll straighten the whole thing out when I get home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Rochester, I want you to go to bed early tonight because I'm going to play golf in the morning and I want you to caddy for me. But, boss, I'm all tied up from caddying for you yesterday. Oh, stop complaining. A nine-hole course is nothing. Nothing for you, but how about me? A golf bag, 12 clubs, a basket of sandwiches, a gallon of lemonade, a first aid kit, and a pair of soles. For what? You don't need a caddy. You need an octopus. <laughs> oh, Rochester, you don't carry so much. I don't. Remember what happened last time I went out loaded down like that? 
What happened? An old prospector tied a rope around my neck and led me off into the mountains. <laughs> Well, why did you go with him? I couldn't see where I was until he unloaded me. <laughs> unloaded you? Stop making things up. Anyway, I'm going to play golf in the morning, and I want you to caddy. Okay, boss. I'll caddy for you, but tomorrow let's be sporting about it. What do you mean, sporty? If we lose a ball, let's call it fate and finish the game anyway. <laughs> All right, Roger. So then we can leave the flashlight home. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. I wonder why he left that prospect to lead him all around the mountain. ...play, which traces the history of that jewel of the desert... 29 palms. Now, in this sketch, Mary, you and I play a pair of pioneers, the first settlers of 29 palms. You're my wife, Mandy. I'm your husband, Randy. And, Larry, you're going to be my son, Sandy. That's dandy. Now, Phil, you're going to be one of my neighbors. And, Don... Yes, Jack? You're going to be the 29 palms. <laughs> so, uh, sit down and branch out. A little bit. And now for our play, The History of 29 Palms, or I'll Be With You in Cactus Blossom Time. <laughs> our scene opens in a little shack in the middle of the desert that's so beautiful, so colorful, so romantic. <laughs> Oh, Mandy, Mandy. What is it, Randy? Have you seen Sandy? <laughs> Last time I seen him was two days ago. A couple of rabbits were chasing him. Two days ago? Why didn't he come home? I don't know. I guess they got him traced somewhere. They did it again, eh? Yep. Doggone, every time we got kid of ours out of the house, the rabbits play with him. Well, it's your own fault, Ma. I told you you should have straightened those two front teeth of his. <laughs> You're right, Paul. I knew we were going to have trouble with that kid the day he was born. What do you mean? When the doctor held him up by his ears. Oh, yes. Here he comes now. Hop on in, son. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. Hello, Randy. Are you hungry, Sandy? A little, Mandy. Have some candy, Sandy. Well, I don't like Sandy candy. <laughs> I didn't say the candy was Sandy candy, Sandy. Did I, Mandy? No, Randy, and he can't have it for after dinner. <laughs> what you say? I said he can't have it till after dinner. Sit down, son. Well, what do we got to eat, Ma? Well, you can have your choice. Fried yucca, mashed tumbleweed, or spaghetti and cactus balls. <laughs> As for me, Ma, spaghetti and cactus balls, but leave off the spaghetti. Okay. Hmm, who can that be? Come in. Hello, stranger. Well, howdy, howdy do. I hear to have neighbors, so I thought I'd drop in. Well, what do you know? Say more. We got a neighbor. Well, howdy, neighbor. Which house do you live in? Oh, that little white house down there, about 200 miles east. <laughs> Anymore. It's just a boom that can't last. <laughs> Say, neighbor, uh, uh, you making much money raising these rabbits? That's my son. <laughs> and by the way, his name is Sandy, I'm Randy, and my wife is Mandy. Sandy, Randy, and Mandy. Well, what a coincidence. Why, what's your name? Fitzgerald. <laughs> that don't rhyme with anything around here. <laughs> but 
You know, stranger, we've been living here on this desert for nigh on to 50 years, and you're the first person ever called on us. What brings you here? Well, I'm kind of running out of water, and I thought maybe you'd let me have some. Running out of what? Water. What's that? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, hold on, hold on. You mean to say you ain't never here to water? Nope. Say, Pat, don't stand there arguing on such a hot day. Let's go take a dip in the swimming pool. A swimming pool? Say, if you folks ain't never here to water, what do you got in that pool? Sand, silly. <laughs> Sand in a swimming pool? Yep, and there's a 50-foot diving board. Hold on, stranger. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, stranger. You can't dive in no pool filled with sand. Who can't? Go ahead, Sandy. Climb up there and show him. Okay, Paul. Now, wait a minute, Paul. He's my son as well as yours. I ain't gonna let him dive off that 50-foot board into that pool of sand like that. Go and put your bathing cap on. <laughs> Paul, on is nothing like mother love. <laughs> You're right up on the diving board, Paul. Okay, son, let her go. <laughs> well, anyway, Ma, we got our teeth fixed. <laughs> a long time to trick him into it. Well, neighbors, I ain't staying around this deserted place any longer. I'm going to where there's civilization, where there's life, people, bright lights, and excitement. Where's that? Yucca Valley. <laughs> Yucca Valley? Say more. That sounds like the kind of a place we ought to visit. Yucca Valley. Let's hitch up the wagon and go. A chicks and ducks and geese better hurry When I take you out in the surrey When hey, I take... Hey, Pa, Pa, don't sing that song. Why not? It ain't been written yet. <laughs> well, I wish they'd hurry. I like it. <laughs> well, we're all hitched up. Let's go. Okay, but wait just a minute. Before we start on such a long trip, we ought to have some refreshments. You got any brandy? Brandy? I don't know. Hey, Mandy, we got any brandy handy? I don't know, Randy. I'll ask Sandy. Never mind. I ain't going through that again. <laughs> now, come on. Let's get started for the big city, Yucca Valley. Okay. I hope it's cooler there. Oh, Mandy, it ain't so hot here. It ain't, eh? On the way over, I saw a tongue coming down the road with a dog hanging out. <laughs> Never mind, let's get started. Everybody in the wagon. Get up. Get up. Wait a minute, hold it just a minute. Here comes somebody staggering toward us. Where? Well, there, he's a stranger. Looks like he's been lost in the desert for weeks. <laughs> yeah, look at that wild look in his eyes. Oh, stranger. Stranger. At last. At last I'm here. At last, civilization, people, excitement, life. Uh, it was a long trip, but I made it. I made it. Take it easy, stranger. Where'd you come from? Yucca Valley. <laughs> Yucca Valley? Well, why did you leave there? The desert, the palms, the wind, the sand, the rabbit. Stranger. The safe, stranger, the hold on. The heat. The Wait a minute. The golf. The golf. The golf. The golf. The golf. The The golf. The golf. The golf. The 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 Just a minute, but first, here's my good friend, Basil Rysdale. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. 